multi-step problems can involve just potential energy, sometimes potential and kinetic, okay, and, but in almost every case you're going to have to find kilojoules per mole in order to complete them. Sometimes you're also going to have to incorporate Hess's law, okay, and typically the heat of formation form. Let's take a look at an example. So in this case, okay, as in every other energy question, you want to ask yourself, uh, do I have potential energy here, do I have kinetic energy, or do I have both? Okay, so if you may recall, the easiest way to determine this is look for temperature change. Temperature change involves kinetic, and as you can see, there is no temperature change indicated directly, so that means kinetic is out, and both, i.e. kinetic and potential, are gone as well, so therefore we only have potential energy. So, you can do this with unit analysis, you can do this with formulas, if you are, we will go through this example with formulas, however you must pay attention to the units as we go. Alright, so I am trying to determine the mass of carbon dioxide in the end. Okay, that's my end goal. Okay, I was told um, how much carbon dioxide is going to be produced when a thousand kilojoules are released. This is an experimental mass corresponding to an experimental enthalpy change. The 5314 kilojoules is the theoretical energy change, enthalpy change for this balanced reaction. So this number goes with the, these coefficients only. You may recall that from Hess's law. So looking for potential energy, sorry, dealing with potential energy, and there will be our general formula for that. I'm trying to solve for mass of CO2, which means I should probably solve for moles at some point. Moles of CO2 equivalent to the delta H over the delta HM. Okay. Another important point, you must remember the difference in units. Delta H, or enthalpy of reaction, is in kilojoules or some form of joules, whereas delta HM is in kilojoules per mole. Okay, you must make that distinction. So in this case, if you look at the values I'm given, I have two kilojoules per mole, sorry, two kilojoules values, i.e. two enthalpy changes. So I need to turn one of them into a kilojoules per mole. Well, the experimental value here only goes with my experimental mass, so I have no way of converting that into moles. Whereas my theoretical 5,314 kilojoules corresponds to my balanced reaction, so I can take that number and divide it by any coefficient I need to, in this case, my carbon dioxide. So the delta H is going to be my 1,000 kilojoules. The multi-step component of it involves getting this kilojoules per mole value. Sorry, that's 5,314 kilojoules for the whole reaction, but I only need it as a per mole value for carbon dioxide. So that's going to be 5,314 kilojoules for 8 moles of CO2. So that ends up being 1,000 kilojoules over 664 point two five kilojoules per mole like so and when we do that math the kilojoules end up canceling out I'm, I'm end up with 1.505 moles of carbon dioxide and from there I can then carry on to convert that into grams. Let's change our color here. And for the mass of carbon dioxide, so I want it in grams, I have 1.505 moles of CO2 
times its molar mass, 44.01 gram per mole. Moles cancel out, leaving me with a value of 66. Sixty six point two four grams. In this case, we have four significant digits in our answer.